Hello, my name is Bernie Pienka. I'm a fisheries biologist with Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. And today I'm gonna to present a fisheries regulation simplification concept proposal. So before getting into the concept proposal, I wanted to provide some background on the ongoing fisheries regulation simplification process. So our last larger simplification process occurred in 2005, where we went through our regulations and looked for areas where we can consolidate and streamline. As with any regulations, we always look for opportunities to consolidate and merge. Um, this recent work was started in 2019, consisted of fishery staff, we had law enforcement staff, and we had the commissioner all participating in the discussion. The primary goal of this whole process was to make fishing regulations simpler and easier for the average anglers to understand, and also to maintain the needed biological protection. So the regulation simplification process took multiple approaches. We looked at specific regulations for deletion, consolidation, and clarification. We also took it one step further and looked at the law digest, areas where we could improve the format, table consolidation, or add clarifying language. So the review process consisted of reviewing Title 10 Appendix 122, looking at it to identify potential changes, those potential changes were identified and then provided to specific fisheries teams or districts for biological consideration. After the biological consideration, we created a concept proposal and then applied that concept proposal to the law digest to see how the new format would look. So the process has multiple steps. We presented this concept proposal to the Fish and Wildlife Board in September. We're going to be working in October to have public informational meetings, which this video is a part of. After those meetings and after we've collected comments, we're going to review the comments and develop a final proposal between November and December. So this final proposal will be brought to the Fish and Wildlife Board in January to start the rulemaking process. In general, the rulemaking process may take up to six months. There'll be additional public hearings and additional votes on the rule with the idea if these rules changes pass, they would take effect in January of 2022. Now, before we get into the concept proposal, I want to introduce some important terms that'll be useful for these discussions. This is seasonally closed lakes and ponds. These waters are closed to fishing, uh, except during the open trout season. Some lakes allow ice fishing, some do not. In general, this is a select group of lakes and ponds. We also have seasonally closed rivers and streams. And these rivers and streams can only be fished during the open trout season. By our definition, all rivers and streams are seasonally closed. And we do have a few exceptions to that rule. So let's get into the concept proposal. In this case, it's looking at certain regulations with a focus on returning them to the general regs. For seasonally closed lakes and ponds, we examine the list. 36 waters were taken off the list. Two were added for biological reasons, leaving 41 waters on the list. For seasonally closed rivers and streams, we're proposing to eliminate these seasonally closed streams and rivers. You would, anglers would be able to fish year round in these streams, catch and release with artificial lures and flies outside of the season for species like trout. Continuing on the concept proposal, we're looking to expand the catch and release in all waters. For species with the defined harvest season, targeting catch and release angling can occur outside of the harvest season using artificial flies and lures. Also proposing to expand the ice fishing trout season for lakes and ponds. In this case, we added waters to the list. There's a slight shift in the start date from the current of the third Saturday in January to the proposed of January 1st. The proposal also calls for the expand of the bass harvest season from the current date of the second Saturday in June to November 30th 
to a proposed of the second Saturday in June to March 15th. Now this March 15th is very important because multiple species use that as a closing date. There would be some exceptions to that change. Lake Champlain and 16 other lakes and ponds would remain the current season. Proposed to edit the landlocked Atlantic salmon minimum length. Currently, we have a minimum length of 15 inches and a special regulation of 17 inches for the Lake Methamagog area. We're proposing to shift it to a minimum length of 17 inch for inland waters in Vermont. Lake Champlain would still be an exception. It would remain the 15 inches. So we're also proposing to change the trout daily limit for streams and rivers. Decreasing the brook trout limit from 12 to 8 and increasing the brown and rainbow trout limit from 6 to 8, resulting in a combined daily trout limit of 8. So for rivers and streams, the combined daily trout limit would be 8. And along that same lines, we're looking at adjusting the Lake Champlain bass minimum length limit. Uh, currently, New York State is changing their bass length limit to 12 inches to match their statewide value. So Vermont is also proposing to change Lake Champlain minimum length to become 12 inches. So the current one is 10, and we're proposing to shift it to 12. Now on to the next step in this concept proposal, looking at special regulations. Now special regulations are an important term. They're different than general regulations and, to and apply to a limited number of waters. Specific waters are listed in the regulation. These special regulations are established to address specific concerns which may be socially or biologically driven. For example, closure of a spawning area is a biologically driven special regulation. We want to protect these vulnerable fish. We have a regulation that for our trophy trout sections on rivers and streams that puts a two fish bag limit. This is done more of a social component to spread the catch out among more anglers. So in the concept proposal, we're making some changes to some of those special regulations. The first, the daily bag limit to rainbow and brown trout. One stream was added. It was shifted from another regulation. Four lakes were taken off the list, leaving five stream and river sections remaining on the list. The daily bag limit to brook, brown, rainbow, lake trout, and salmon. We reviewed the list. Two lakes were removed from this list, leaving 21 lakes and ponds on the list. Also looked at spring river closures from the second Saturday in April to May 31st. Six river sections were taken off the list, leaving 16. The concept proposal also called for changes in special regulations on lakes and ponds. Little Averill and Seymour Lake had special regulations related to lake trout. Those current regulations had a reduced number of lines for open water and ice fishing a single lake trout bag limit and a higher minimum length. Under this proposed, we're going to return it to general regulations, which would be eight lines of prize fishing, two lines open water, a two tra lake trout limit, and a 18 inch minimum. Limit. Kent and Baker Ponds had some special regulations related to bass. Currently, they had a 10 bass limit with a slot limit that bass between 10 and 12 inches must be released and only one bass over 12 could be harvested. We proposed to shift those to general regulations, which would be five bass with a 10 inch minimum length. So we introduced some of the proposed regulation changes, but what does that mean for the angler? This means there's fewer special regulations and outside a short list of seasonally closed waters or special regulation waters, an angler can fish most Vermont waters any time of the year with artificial flies and lures if they practice catch and release. This is an important shift in our current regulations. So as we know from many of our angler surveys, lots of people get 
the fisheries regulations from our law digest. So how do these proposed changes influence or change the law digest? So in our current law digest, we have seven tables that would need to be reviewed when you fish inland areas of Vermont. With these proposed changes, those seven tables would become one table. So our concept proposal comes forward and it looks at simplifying all these regulations. And in the end, we end up with this simple table. Now the table does have some rivers and streams and lakes and ponds sections, um, but overall it covers most of the water bodies. Now we know that the figure here, the table, is difficult to view. But if we blow up and I draw, drew a blue box around an area which we're going to expand to get a better perspective on what those changes are. So in the expanded view, we can see for Bowfin, Mullet, Red Horse Gar, we have two sections. We have a river streams and we have a lakes and ponds area with the only difference being some of the methods of harvest. We have ice fishing, spear gun for the lakes and ponds. And for the brook trout, brown trout, and rainbow trout, in the rivers and stream sections, we have a different bag limit than the lakes and ponds. And then you also have a different season where the lakes and ponds have a ice fishing season. If we take that same concept and blow up a different area of the table, to give a better perspective, you can see here in this blue box. So in this case, the blown up area has the lake trout and landlocked Atlantic salmon. We have two sections, rivers and streams and lakes and ponds. Again, with the ice fishing component being in the lakes and ponds. Uh, and we have largemouth and smallmouth bass, which have a default component. And as we've said earlier, we used to have a catch and release season that would appear in the table for largemouth and smallmouth bass. And now we apply that catch and release for all species. So it more generalizes that component. So to wrap it all up, and what does this mean in the, for the law digest? The digest will only need three tables under this current concept proposal. A general waters table, a Lake Champlain table, and a Connecticut river table. Now, for the specific index of rivers and streams, the area an individual would go to to find a special regulation, we removed 26 stream sections, were removed, and returned to general regulations. For the index of lakes and ponds, 44 lakes and ponds were moved to general regulations, removed from that list. 25 lakes and ponds will have a portion of their special regulations lifted, and 13 lakes and ponds were added to the special regulations for biological protection. So a review of the timeline, uh, informational presentation was given to the Fish and Wildlife Board in September. We're going to be having in October some public informational meetings to go over the presentation and proposal and gather public input. We'll bring forward an official proposal to the Fish and Wildlife Board in January of 2021 starting the rulemaking process and completing the rulemaking process, hopefully by June of 2021. As a result of these major changes, there's going to be significant law digest modifications, which are going to occur next summer, with the changes taking effect in January of 2022. I want to leave people with a few key closing points. These, this concept proposal, increases angling opportunities while maintaining the needed biological protections. The law digest simplification with most Vermont waters referring to a single table. Outside of a short list of seasonally closed waters or special regulation waters, an angler could fish most Vermont waters any time of the year with artificial flies and lures if they practice catch and release. So in closing, I want to talk about the next steps. We're currently in the process of gathering public comments. We have some public informational meetings scheduled. We have two virtual meetings, one scheduled for October 13th and one scheduled for October 14th. We're also going to utilize social media and the department website. And we're going to have this video available for download.
people can view it at their convenience. We'll also have proposal and additional material available online for people to examine. The Fish and Wildlife Board will be part of this process as well. So you'll have an opportunity to provide comments and thoughts on this proposal um, to either our email or you can reach out to the Fish and Wildlife Board representatives or contact the department. And with that, have a good night.